Hey, what's up guys? It's Marquez from the MKBHD channel, back with another video for the Droid Dog YouTube channel and DroidDog.com. And today we're going to be taking a look at the Motorola Droid X2, both a hardware and software video review. Now basically, if you've already seen the previous generation of the Motorola Droid X, you'll be very familiar with the externals of this hardware. So it's boasting another 4.3 inch screen, it has a 1500 milliamp hour battery, an 8 megapixel camera, a lot of the things, including these hardware buttons on the bottom, are very similar. It has that signature bulge up top here. Now there are three main points that are different from the original Droid X. The first, which is kind of minor, is that there is no camera button here on the side. The second point is that this is rocking a 960 by 540 QHD display. And I'll turn this down when I show you guys the uh, software. I'll actually turn it down now. But this is what uh, Motorola has dubbed a QHD display. Uh, as supposed to be quarter resolution. But this is a really, really high pixel density display. It's rocking uh, about 200 uh, dots per inch. And before you get into why I'm using uh, Launcher Pro, I'll cover that as well in this video. But this is a very high resolution display that the original Droid X didn't have. And last but not least, in the internals, this phone has a 1 GHz dual core Tegra 2 processor, as opposed to the original Droid X's single core. No, this is not a 4G device. I know a lot of people just can't get over the fact that this doesn't have 4G. And when buying a device, a lot of people like to consider that a little upgradability and some speed. But this dual core processor does make it pretty future proof. So I'm going to go ahead and give you an overview of what I think of the phone from the distance that I've used it. Basically, I have very mixed feelings about this device, especially the display. As I said before, it's a really high pixel density and it does look good when you're typing. The keyboard looks great. Text is very, very crisp. Uh, and there's no problems with the display. It's just that the contrast is a little bit off. Some of the darks aren't all that pitch black. You can see that we're running a, we're still running Moto Blur, of course, and we're running this uh, sort of skin that they've overlaid on top of Android 2.2. So we have this sort of uh, blue theme going on with the notification panel on this uh, this gradient effect. But that's beside the point. Um, like I said, yeah, it's running Android 2.2, but this phone comes with a lot of bloatware, or crapware, people like to call it. Uh, these are just a few apps I have installed, but you can see I have this page here basically for all the apps that come stock with Android devices, what an Android device should have. You know, Google Calendar, Gmail, The Market, Maps, etc., things like that, and Google Talk and YouTube. Uh, of course, Google Talk, by the way, won't work. There's no front-facing camera for Google Talk video chats. On this next page here, I have all of the, un the applications that come installed that you can't uninstall from this phone. So you have Slacker Radio, you have Skype, you have all the Carrier Vcast apps, you have 3G Hotspot, which I wouldn't really use. I do prefer 4G. Uh, you have Social Networking Hub. This networking hub is kind of useful, although I would do prefer my own dedicated apps. But as you can see here, it's a sort of slow, bulky version of uh, their own uh, Omni useful social networking app. But there's DLNA over here, there's City ID, Amazon MP3, I am. There's a whole bunch of stuff on this phone that you might not want. And uh, I don't know, I do have mixed feelings about this, but I mean, you do have a lot of functionality built into the phone already. So that's not really a problem. It's just something to be wary of. I do like to have phones that have very clean operating systems and don't have a whole lot of bloatware to worry about. But the next thing you should know about this phone is that it is really, really fast. The t dual core Tegra 2 processor makes it great for simple things like opening up the phone really quick and taking a quick picture. So we might as well use this opportunity to talk about the camera, which actually surprisingly does take a bit to open. Go ahead and snap a quick picture. I mean, the interface is pretty slick if you leave the animation off and you can see here we have some tagging abilities. You can switch to the video camera. And when I do switch to video camera, you have the ability to turn the light on, which is really, really bright. I won't go too into that, but very bright light from the back, dual LED flash. Uh, but you do have some pretty neat effects. You can take 720p video, or you can take some 8 megapixel photos with all kinds of crazy effects if it wants to cooperate with this. No, I think it's frozen already. But, uh,. Yeah, this device has been really fast and really responsive up until now. It's been uh, one of my favorite devices to use just for everyday things. So things like checking Twitter, checking Facebook, uh, very casual web browsing since you're not going to be going over 4G speeds. You can still browse the web at 3G speeds, which are pretty variable depending on your area. I happen to live in a very good coverage area, uh, but 3G speeds are for me pretty acceptable if people can't get over this device not having 4G. 
Uh, another little minor gripe I had was these hardware buttons down here at the bottom. They don't have a whole lot of travel. Uh, I did find them a little bit annoying to press as opposed to capacitive buttons that a lot of other devices have. Although you may feel differently about that. You can always check out the original Droid X uh, to see how you feel about that. But this device has been very, very smooth in average day-to-day -day use. I haven't had any problems with it and I do like it as an upgrade to anything except the original Droid X. So if you're coming from an original Droid or a, you know an older generation device, this really large high resolution screen might be appealing to you. Uh, and this dual core processor and, and future proofness might be really nice. Other than that, this is basically a minor upgrade over the original Motorola Droid X. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments and I will gladly let you guys know any answers that I can get. Either way, this has been MKBHD with a quick video on the Motorola Droid X for DroidDog.com. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you guys next week. Peace.